I may make a question if you don't mind. Please. How, how do you adapt your calculation to different environmental realities or social realities? Because I suppose companies operate globally and they would like to find out, you know, you have different ways of value, valuing the environment in, in different sy systems or you have different biomes or different... How do you deal with that to create a, a balanced decision? Well, the, the simple answer is that what we always do is we use this rigorous sensitivity analysis to bracket the range because in all of these things, one of the questions that I always get is, how do you value a reef or how do you vary, value you know, a, a rainforest? Well, the simple answer for that is for reefs, the United Nations Environment Program published two years ago uh, a complete dossier on estimates that have been produced around the world of value of reef, different qualities of reef from different parts of the world. And they provided a central um, guidance value of $1 million per square kilometer per year, every year, because it's a supply of ongoing um, ser services, right? Ecosystem services. So you can use that to benchmark but one, the, what you want to do then is to recognize the local variability within the sensitivity analysis. If there's a local study, for instance, if for rainforest, if the Brazilian government or uh, one of the universities here has done their economics department, has published studies on what they believe is the total economic value, the TEV, of those kinds of, um, of ecosystem services, then we can use that as the, as the reference point. But we have to understand that these things aren't exact science, and they, we have to put that range in. A lot of people say that that's a weakness of, the, of this approach. But I would then ask, because they say, well, these are intangible things. But I would ask, what's the price of oil? You know, what day is it? <laughs> right? Market-based values, which we think are real, things that we buy every day and we trade, they're subject to fluctuations all over the place. Look at the GFC, how things go up and down, the value of oil, $200, $50, you know, who knows? The, the, the natural, so variability in how we value things is natural. It, it's always there, and we have to embrace it and use it to find things that are options that are robust, rather than trying to come up with a number, which you will never be able to do, ever. Uh, we would like to see environmental economics coming, becoming mainstream somehow in policy making. And we know that there is a long way to go till that really happens, at least here in Brazil. We, we can count in the, our fingers of our hands how many environmental economists uh, that you know, we can work with here in the countries that will be able to help us um, adapt this calculation or quantify to our realities. And uh, so uh, that might, I would like to see what is your perspective, um, you know, how fast is this going in Australia, in Europe, how is this field of environmental economics becoming ad accepted, you know, to mainstream economy? That's an interesting question because there's actually two parts to it. The first is that the science of environmental and ecological economics has been around since the 1970s. It's been around a generation, you know, and, but it hasn't been used. It's been an academic exercise largely, and there's been lots published and books written, but they've been largely ignored. And what we're doing here is, the trick is, is that you can take all the science, what the environmental economists do is they value things. They say, we think that, uh, um, you know, a hectare of rainforest is worth $5,000 per hectare per year um, in terms of all the, the, the services that it provides to, to humanity. That alone is almost useless to a business person. So what? Because you need to know how many hectares are being affected, to what degree or what period of time, what restoration might happen, and you need to look at a range of options that you're comparing, one of which clear cuts and one of which manages in different ways. And so the trick is to take the fundamental information that environmental economics has created as a discipline, as an academic discipline, and use it in a, an intelligent, business-oriented way to make decisions. That's what this process is about. Um, 
I can tell you that you will not see this anywhere else in the world. <coughs> the reason I know this is because I wrote a book on this six years ago, and no one bought it. <laughs> so I know, I know that, you know, in terms of taking that, that stuff and using it in a business decision making context, it's very new. And over the last four years with Worley Parsons, we've managed to start working with governments and industries around the world. So we're, we've done hundreds of these projects in the last four years, and that's the mainstream that's occurring. Um, I, that, I'm hoping my new book that more people will, will, <laughs> will uh, see that it might be useful. But it's that two part that environmental economics has been around a long time. It's using that that's the trick. That's the trick. How do you get business people to understand it, see how to use it, and make better decisions? That's the trick. Okay, so it's really good to hear that uh, we'll definitely recommend your book to our students here at the <laughs> Business and Economics School because this is a great challenge for those who work with sustainability, for sure.